My name is Nina Matisson, and I am Developer Relations Manager here in Scenicat. In this video, we are going to create a sample application that uses our authentication API. And I will be using C Sharp for the backend and React for the front end, but we support SDKs in multiple languages, just so you know that. The sample code is available on our GitHub page, and it is linked below in the description. So before we get into all that, let's just have a look at the application we're going to be building. So you see it on this screen here. This is the application we'll be creating. And there's this image here, and there's some text. You can, of course, we're going to show you how you can customize this and make it your own. So we have this sign in button here where we ask the end user to sign in. Let's just click it now and see what happens. So we've set it up so you are redirected to the identification method screen. These are the three methods we have pre-selected, Norwegian Bank ID, Swedish Bank ID, and Danish Mid ID. So for the purposes of this film, we are going to be uh, looking at how to set up Mid ID. So let's click Mid ID now and see what happens. So here you see uh, we need to put in a user ID. And for Mid ID, we use a test user in order to generate test credentials. And we can find these on the MidID test tool page. So let's go there right now. All right, so let's just click autofill and then wait a few seconds. And any moment now, we'll be able to click create identity. So this also takes a few seconds, but once you get to that page, there are two things we should look out for. One is identity claim and the other is CPR. So let's copy the identity claim for now and go back to our application. Okay, so we enter the user ID here or the identity claim under user ID. And we, it asks us to approve the authentication in the MidID app. So let's go back and scroll to the very bottom and click open simulator and wait a few seconds and then click confirm. All right, and we go back to the test application now. So now we have to actually enter the CPR number. So we go back one more time and we fetch that information and put it in and press continue. And let's see what happens. Yes, it was successful. And we were able to retrieve the user's name and national identification number. So you can obviously also change this page to look however you like. Um, but now that we've shown you this, we are almost ready to start building this application. But before that, we need to do one more thing. We need to fetch our client ID and secret, and we need to set the scopes. So this, uh, all these things we do in the Signicat dashboard. So let's go there. All right, here we are. And if you haven't done so already, you should sign up for Signicat Express, and that will allow you to sign into the dashboard. This is done within a few minutes. This is entirely free, so there's no reason not to. And we link in the description below. So now once you've logged in uh, and it looks like this, you should go to API client where we are right now and click create a new client. Okay, so let's just give this a name. We can call it uh, authentication client. And let's make sure that the flow is set to client credentials. So here you see the all important client secret. You should make a copy of it and you should keep it safe. We're going to copy it for now and then click create. So on this screen, you see that the client ID is right here and you're going to be needing it later. So you have the secret copied, you have the client ID right there. Let's set scopes. So click the OAuth slash open ID and here you see all the scopes you could possibly want to set. And the scopes, they are what give you access to different resources in our APIs. And we are going to be uh, using the authentication API today. So we are simply going to add the identify scope. So select edit and identify the identify scope down there and go up again and click save. And it worked. All right, now we're ready to build the application. So. Uh, open Visual Studio or whatever program you're using, and we're ready. So here I have preloaded some sample code, which we will go through. And uh, before we do that, though, we need to install the Cinecad SDK. So you can install it either through the NuGet package manager in Visual Studio or Rider, 
or you can simply do it from your command line with the standard .NET add package command. Um, Saving Cat Express's SDK is called IDEFY, so search for IDEFY and click add package. All right, uh, let's have a look at that code then. So we've already put in the startup class to configure the server, so we won't go into detail about that. We'll be going straight into the authentication session. Here we set up a simple controller that can be reached from the front end application. And here we set up the identification service from the SDK. Uh, this can also be set up using a standard .NET dependency injection, but for the sake of simplicity, we just set it up in the constructor here. So now we're about to set up client credentials. So here you see uh, we put in the client ID, which we showed you earlier, and the client secret, which we copied and saved in the safe space. And here are the scopes. So as mentioned, the authentication service requires the OAuth scope identify. So we only chose this for now. Next, we're going to create the endpoint where we will create a new session. And we specify our front end domain and our back end domain here. We use the create session asynchronous method uh, from the SDK, which does not lock up our thread. So now we're going to configure the settings that we'd like to use. First, we set the flow to redirect, and this tells the API where the user should be redirected to. And here are the redirect settings. Uh, the error URL is used if the user encounters some kind of error in the session and needs to be redirected to a separate error page. Uh, the abort URL is used if the user aborts the login and the success URL is used if the user completes successful authentication. It redirects to the backend domain, which we will uh, visit in a few minutes. So now we configure allowed providers and here we specify which identification methods are allowed for the user. And if we don't specify anything, all of the allowed identification methods will be shown but we have specified the three ID methods which you saw in the very beginning and which you see right here. So the next setting is include. And in the include, we specify which properties we want the authentication API to return to us. Not all properties are available uh, for all EIDs and you can read more about that in the documentation. So here we ask the API to return the name and the national identification number to us. So now the session is created and we can redirect the user to the session URL so they can start their authentication flow. This redirect can be done in a bunch of different ways, but we use a standard way with a 303 HTTP status code and set the header for the redirect location. But let's just go back to the success URL for a moment. What we specify here is where the authentication API should redirect the user after a successful authentication. What we need in order to receive this request is a get method for the endpoint, which we specify here. The authentication API um, will then send a get request to our endpoint with a unique session ID as a query parameter. We can then use this ID to fetch information about the session from the API. For example, the name and NIN we requested when we made the session. So for the sake of simplicity, we just send the name and the NIN back to our front end in the URL. And please note that this is not best practice. You do not usually want to reveal this info in the URL in your actual application. But We've actually finished going through all the back end now, so let's go to the front end. All right, here you can find the front end, and it is written in React. At the very top here, you see our auth display. It has a sign in button, and that's what will send out a post request. A little further down, the success page is evident. Uh, it shows successfully signed in when you successfully sign in. And again, you can totally alter this message however you like. And um, let's just go a little bit down. Uh, in case of error, 
This is the error message we will be showing. Uh, and further down here, uh, the URL is fetched and we extract the information from the URL. So this is basically our front end. And as you see, there's a little bit more that you could explore, but we are not gonna go into further detail here because we just want to show you how you can, with a minimum of effort, set up your own uh, application. Obviously, this is all available on GitHub. So now we're finished and you've seen how quickly you can use our REST API to authenticate your users. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, please just write them below or write them in our community. And that's it. Thanks for watching.